Does anyone remember the Steam machines from back in 2015? Well, back then, Valve decided that Linux gaming was the future. Can you imagine that? And worked with a few different PC manufacturers to develop pre-built PCs as Steam machines. So, basically a console with Linux on it. Oh, well, they didn't go very well. They sold less than 500,000 and then kind of quietly faded away. The big deal though is how we got a hold of our savior, Proton. Proton is what allows us to play tons of Windows games on Linux. It's like a translation layer, so not an emulator. People get really mad when you call these things emulators. Like, really mad. It's working kind of off of uh, our, fa our old school tool, Wine, which actually stands for Wine is not an emulator, if you want to get an idea about that. But anyways, it lets you play Windows games, for the most part, on Linux, and it's pretty cool. You know, the only downside is um, anti-cheat software, things like that, so you're not going to be playing uh, Valorant on there, but Valve's working on that. But this is the killer app of the Steam Deck, and that's kind of what brings us here today. We're going to make our own Steam machine using a slightly more modern piece of hardware and with a more modern Steam OS. This is the one that's based off of Arch and not uh, Debian or Ubuntu, depending on who you talk to. You're pronouncing it all wrong. I'm pronouncing everything wrong. Lanix. Lanix. <laughs> Tomato. So we're gonna go ahead and use our friend here, the Optiflex 9010, AKA the Optiflex. This bad boy is running an i7-3770 non-K, which is a four core beast from yesteryear. We're gonna partner that with an AMD RX 6400 this cute little card right here. We usually have an NVIDIA 1650 in the system, but the SteamOS port we're using, which, you know, check out our video on that, doesn't work right on NVIDIA due to all kinds of closed source shenanigans. NVIDIA might actually be changing its tune on that, but today's not the day. So then I guess we just cut straight over to me installing it or anything yeah, else I need know, to say. Maybe just, maybe just pop the thing in there. Oh God. Ugh. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gav, how do I open this thing? So I'm allowed to do this because I don't actually need any tools and it's Linux. Division of labor. All right, yeah, how do I work this thing? I'm always afraid it's more complicated than it actually is, which is part of my problem. And then what, it's got a slide or? No. Got a little, you pull on a little lever at the PCI slot. No, oh, I'm making sure that there's nothing else with the bracket here. I'm gonna take a card out, in theory. Hello? Oh my God. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Another cute little card. Even cuter card. This is, seriously, this is actually adorable. Yeah, these cards are both relatively the same performance if you actually know how to install them, which I think anybody with a pulse that isn't me can do that. More or less the same performance, but this one's a bit smaller, and I think this one might actually fit in one of the more lower profile Dell cases, because you know you get this one, and you get the one that's like that big. That actually might fit in one of those. I would try and cut it open with something random, but I don't think Ferris watches our videos anymore. It's okay, we got 4,000 new friends. If you wanna be one of those 4,000 friends, get subscribed. So what are we swapping in here? Just a basic 500 gig? Nope, oh, terabyte, ooh. Yeah, everyone says I can just mount it into that little cage there, but do you really want me to use a screwdriver? I think you know how to plug in a SATA power, but I don't even know how this cage works, I don't care. Sue me, YouTube. Sue me. Leave it on its side. Maybe Gab will get mad and do it for me. I am not a tapeologist. I am a scientist. So to get started, you download the ISO. It's hollow ISO from the link in the description. You flash it to a flash drive with Valena Etcher or something similar, but be careful. The guy specifically calls out some software that will not work. Let's just use Valena Etcher. Once you find a way to boot to it with your computer, you usually got to mash F12 or something similar to get it to boot. You boot into it. Come on. Uh, uh. The faster you mash it, the faster it boots. Remember that, kids. So then I'm going to go ahead and select Steam OS install medium. They're both medium. But with the Linux Neptune kernel instead of the core Linux kernel. I don't know why you would be running your Steam OS on AMD hardware and not use their super secret special kernel. But if you know a good reason, let me know in the comments why you'd be running the mainline kernel. So yeah, install Neptune. It's a planet, a real planet, not a dwarf planet. So you're gonna get presented with this cool screen of black screen, green and white text, some 
I saw red. It's bad. Red bad. <laughs> so you're gonna go ahead and hook up to a Wi-Fi adapter. Now, your built-in Wi-Fi adapter won't work unless you're a Turbo Linux nerd and you know how to use the command line or terminal, sorry, sorry. Now, I'm just a regular Linux nerd, I'm not a Turbo one, so I use my phone to tether, or in this case, we just plugged it into the wall with a Ethernet cable. Once you're plugged in or connected in whatever manner you're seeking, you're gonna go ahead and just type in hello install. And it'll say your internet check, your internet check passed. We're gonna go for the full Steam OS 3 experience. That's what we're all about here. And then this is where you would start playing with partitions and everything like that if you're trying to dual boot. We're not, we're gonna type in SDA, which is the main drive, nuke it, call it a day. Yes, bye bye. Goodbye, college puss. <laughs> Goodbye, college fun. <laughs> no way, that's when you buy the Steam Deck. All right, so it's gonna ask you a bunch of weird questions like that. The default is all for all of these things. I'm gonna go with the default. Default, good. I don't know what there is. One of them's Bison, one's Fake Root. You actually do need Fake Root for a lot of like weird installation stuff later on. Let's see, three providers for Initram RPS. Default is one, so I'm gonna go with one. Proceed with installation. Why, yes, I will. Yeah, depending on your connection speed, your flash drive speed, your hard drive speed, your CPU speed, take anywhere from like five minutes to like forever. <laughs> I saw fake root, I told it to do that. I saw bison, I still know what that is. And our host name, uh, coil. Root password. Definitely not coil. Definitely not coil. 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 Well, I highly recommend you use different passwords than that, but we're just doing it for a video. I mean, who's using this as their only install? I tried. <laughs> yeah, it's really flying. It's got the zoomies. Four cores, eight threads. Enough for framework owners. <laughs> Zero out of 140. One out of three out of 140. 12 out of 30. It's zooming, man. All right, so it's finished installing, so you can control delete or just type in reboot if you feel like it. I like typing in reboot, it makes me feel like a hacker. Yeah, remove your flash drive. Uh, unless you like mashing buttons and pretending you didn't screw up. It's trying to do network booting. Well, that's different. That's because of the Dell BIOS. It's you're trying to, yeah. Um, yeah. Can't, even, can't even control delete out? Yeah. Dell, why are you like this? Dell, if you got a weird Dell BIOS, just start mashing buttons until you turn everything else off. I was gonna say, why is it consumer? But no, this is a business device. Yeah. It's, yeah. Got, it's got a lock on the side panel. It's a business device. <laughs> it was never intended for this purpose. We did it, boys! <laughs> so, <laughs> you let it do its own thing or you hit enter if you don't want to wait. Now, here we go. Precious is it's still going to be horrifyingly. Coil login. Coil. Password. Coil. Oh, we even have like a, a relatively readable um, layout here. Yeah, no, it's gotten better since you've done it. All right, so we're in. Select our language, which is Englando. Uh, Eastern time, because that's the only time zone that actually matters. We're gonna use a wired connection. Your battery is low. Joke's on you, I don't have a battery. Battery's at 0%, boys. Jupiter Bioservice. <laughs> of course not, I don't have the, the deck itself. Of course there's no Jupiter. A video idea, installing HoloS on the Steam Deck. Don't write that down, it's stupid. So just uh, squint your eyes a little bit and try and log into Steam. Yeah, don't make any typos. Yeah, log in with your Steam credentials like you would with any Steam installation. Or log in with Gabs in this case. Press any button or tap the screen to continue. Have fun. Well, it is unhappy. Well, yeah, because you pressed something. It, it said hit any button. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just looking to see how the interface looks. It looks terrible on this. Yeah, it is not happy. Anyway, yeah, just go down to power. Well, your library looks fine. Now they gave you more practice. They don't because, work. Because the, uh, like the, the screen timing and everything is wrong. Oh, okay. So you go down to power, you switch to desktop mode, because this is very broken. 
But we're not using it for the cool handheld interface. We're using this for all the performance improvements in theory. Game scope, FSR, all that jazz, all the buzzwords. So here we go. And then you can return to gaming mode if you felt so inclined, but I really don't recommend it. <laughs> Steam Linux Runtime Soldier. We're at, we're at Proton 7? Wow. It's been seven years, bud. Wow. So we're gonna go ahead and move games from a different drive over to this one, just in case you don't feel like manually downloading them. So to do that, we download literally any title just to create those Steam files and Steam folders. We used Among Us because it's like half a gig uh, and it's funny. So once it's downloaded, you can right click on it from here or in your library. You go to manage, browse local game files. So this is where it's installed. You just go up to the top there and you click common to go up a level. And this is where you install your games. Oh, right, it's Linux. It has tabs in the Explorer. Oh, that's weird. I never knew I needed something so badly till right now. <laughs> yeah, so we got our drive plugged in here. So we're going to go ahead and just take our drive here, which is just a new volume under removable drives. It's very similar to working with Windows, honestly. Take our Forza Horizon over here, and we're going to paste one folder. Oh, because it's only one thing I copied. I was like, is it only going to paste just an empty folder just to screw with me? Yeah. That would have been funny. That would be Linux. All right, so wait a few minutes to copy over, which we're copying over a pretty hefty game here. Forza is not a, a joke. Once it's done transferring, then you go ahead and act like you're installing it. Even though it's already installed, Steam needs to know that it's there. So you go, yep, install where you're going to install, whatever. So it should change from preparing to discovering. So now it's discovering those existing files, and we don't have to actually download 100 gigs off the internet. It's done! We did it, boys! It's doing it! It's launching! Could it finally be? Holy cow, so after you compile your shaders, it actually starts launching. It's actually working. Wow. Okay, skip the intro, I don't care. I don't care who you are, Playground Games, I just want to play a game on Linux. Oh yeah, one of the benefits of the OptiFlex is having built-in audio. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Alright, so now we're logged in, not only to SteamOS, not only to Steam, but also into uh, Gab's account, Skinless Golem, on uh, Microsoft. So let's hit continue and just, uh, optimizing for my PC more loading, let's go! <laughs> Woo, baby! I do love me a loading bar. There's no bar, though, so I'm kind of mad. Oh, God, people get to see how bad I am at a drive. It, I don't have a steering wheel, that's why. Yep. Run dirt roads. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Look at that! A Microsoft game running on Linux. Oh. Running on a, uh, not just on Linux, but a port of a Steam handheld device that some community member made. It's actually pretty ridiculous this works as well as it does. So yeah, that's how you can put SteamOS on your old OptiFlex, and now you've got a Linux-powered, no Microsoft gaming machine. Wait, there's Microsoft on there. No Microsoft! <laughs> Gaming machine. Uh, you know, if you care about that philosophically speaking. But again, there should be some performance improvements built into the system if Valve is to be believed. You know, let me know in the comments if you really want me to suffer through a comparison between Steam OS and Windows. For performance? That sounds awful. Gab, is that awful? That sounds like eight hours of awful. That, that's pretty awful. You have to get some major subscriptions to this video to justify that. So get subscribed. Subscribe on this video, <laughs> subscribe on this video so we can see it in the statistics. Yeah, basically. And then, uh, you know, you can also use this just like any other Steam system, any other computer, and do in-home streaming. So you could use this as not only a little in the living room console, but you could also use that to stream off of your main desktop, which presumably is in a bedroom or something somewhere else. Because honestly, the Optiflex, not that much bigger than a PS5. I'm just saying. So, just like every other operating system video, this has been awful. Uh, if you want to make me feel better about it, leave a comment, get subscribed, join us on the Discord, now with the working link, and we'll see you next time.